Good uh, morning to you. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. So, um, this story just won't go away, really, will it? I mean, we saw at the weekend, Andrew now thinks that uh, he has a reasonable level of, uh, of accuracy, I suppose, in saying that um, this extraordinary development means that he should get his money back. What do you make of that? Well, I think he's a man who's got the worst judgment of anybody I've ever heard about. <laughs> he should have known not to get involved with Epstein. He should have known not to have done that interview with Emily. He should have known not to have paid all the money unless he felt that that would really clear it up. Um, and now he's going to he's going to spend up to ten million pounds mm. trying to get his money back. Um, lawyers have said to him he doesn't stand a chance. The trouble with him, not just is it incredibly poor judgment, it's that he won't listen to any advice. His daughter Beatrice tried to persuade him not to do the interview on BBC television, mm. but he took no notice. Um, and he's just ridiculous. One of my m many concerns is that all this, if he goes ahead, and makes a fool of himself again but will he do it around the coronation so that it takes away a lot of the feeling and excitement mm. and movement of it all um and you know, can anybody believe anyone who is a maxwell i mean gislaine or as you say anywhere you want to say that first name it's not easy to well, know. You know the reason i the reason one of the reasons that i have difficulty in, in knowing which way they suppose they supposedly want to pronounce it is that when robert maxwell was alive i interviewed him once when he was on the boat that he died on uh, the lady gislaine and then, then it was called the lady gislaine it wasn't called G lady gislaine it was called the lady gislaine yes I, I interviewed him too when he talked about his daughter and I thought he, he used the name for the boat, but things change, don't they? This is all sort of French and je ne sais quoi. Yeah, well, you know, perhaps but... so. It doesn't help her case, I'm afraid, but, but maybe... She's in, prison. she's in prison for 20 years, for goodness sake. Yeah. I know she's going to appeal, but this is a very serious um, number of yeah. years to stay in prison. But can you believe anything she says? Right. No, well, this is it, and she's in prison for sex trafficking of yes. underage girls. I mean, that's not a minor charge. That's a very serious charge. And, and you know, for her to say, I wish I'd never met um, Jeffrey Epstein, well, fine. But I wish that, uh, I'm sure Prince Andrew wishes he never met her or him. But, yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Well, you know, when you get involved in those things, you've got a reason where you somehow your, your own body doesn't let you get out and you just go downhill. Um, but then there is an answer afterwards about whether you have to take um, a whack for getting involved like that. Mm, exactly you can't right. just do those things and hide them. I mean, he invited them all, Epstein and Ghislaine, to the Buckingham Palace, to all sorts of parties. Yeah. Um, so he didn't try to hide them. Um, you know, he didn't even have that sort of no. sense. It is absolutely, it is absolutely shocking that he would do that. And also, I think his mother, the late Queen Elizabeth, if she knew he was going to use the money that she left him to try and get off the hook, she would turn in her grave. Yes, I bet she would. And also, I mean, she was obviously Andrew's main source of kind of, you know, handouts, wasn't she? I mean, it was she that probably, we think, uh, supplied the money that he paid uh, Geoffrey off with. Um, yeah. So I don't know where he's going to find 10 million unless he finds another rich kind of sponsor because that seems to be how he's lived his life. Yes, and he does. But uh, he seems to want to do this to get his HRH title mm. back and start doing work for the royal family. But um, King Charles doesn't like him. I can't imagine that he will give it back. And the public would be absolutely furious. Mm. They were take it actually you can't sort of play around like that but i think he doesn't realize the impression that he's giving anyone yeah. else he's so pompous um that he just won't learn yes. and I, I think that it's a big danger to to the monarchy there's absolutely enough with harry and Meghan, and, and and him to join in and be absolutely um awful about yeah. all I mean, I just, I know this is terrible of me and I shouldn't say it, but I wonder if the two of them are doing some sort of plan to ruin the coronation altogether mm. because it's building up in the most terrible way. Um, and they're all revealing themselves to be rather selfish individuals, aren't they? Thinking about themselves. Rather, 
very. Rather, rather than the state occasion. As, as somebody pointed out that I was listening to yesterday, this is not just simply, you know, Andrew's brother or, you know, Harry's dad. This is the king of Great yeah. Britain, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and yeah. Northern Ireland, uh, at yeah. a state occasion. Yes, absolutely. And it's, it began, I'm just checking the date, in 973. That yeah. was the first coronation. So we've got a huge thing to reach up to and to take seriously and then after all the seriousness you know can have some fun but i think whatever you feel about your family you don't ruin this because this is ruining it mm, for exactly. all the public this is not just getting your own back and in any case they're grown men go away live your own life and yeah. leave and go on and on and on and on. I mean, Andrew's life is pretty well cosseted, isn't it? I mean, he hasn't got much to do. He doesn't have to worry about paying for anything. Uh, his luxury is still intact. You know, he's got a car to drive around in. He's got a lovely place to live. You know, apparently he spends quite a lot of his time with his ex-wife, Fergie. Um, his daughters still uh, dote upon him, despite what he's done. And I think, really, um, he, as you say, he should just sit down and shut up and get on with it. I mean, because at the end of the day, even if he didn't do what she what she uh, uh, accused him of doing he paid her off it doesn't look good um, and let that be the end of it yes but you see he wants to be important you can't help a man who thinks so highly of himself that the main thing he's got to be important and he's got to be pompous and he wants to do business mm. and use the hrh which will help him do the business well you can't attach our monarchy to what he wants to deal in anymore because he's not trustworthy no. and he's just got to accept the fact that it's just not working and you see the two sides of the royal family some half of them are absolutely fantastic and understand what duty is and think about the country and what their job is and help people and then the other side are people who are only thinking of themselves and and want more and more whatever they've got they want more um, and I think to try and get your own back on somebody in that sort of situation, um, however bad you might think he is, and I don't think King Charles is bad. I, I think, you know, we've all got faults, but to try and attack him and bring him down like that and Camilla with him, I think is absolutely disgraceful. Mm. Oh, I agree. And what about the actual three days of pageantry as they're now being described, that it's going to be more like, uh, I suppose, the funeral uh, for Queen Elizabeth um, than we think. Yes, it is going. They are going to repeat some of the things. The big lunch. This is the coronation big lunch. I went to the Jubilee big lunch with um, Camilla, where she was, and it was fantastic. I mean, people got together, and I met there all sorts of people who'd done voluntary work and set up charities and been mm. incredibly helpful and they want something like that on the third day to get more and more people volunteering i think that's very good but also the people who are paid should also be working not just rely on people who are going to do it for nothing the one thing i feel is rather odd is that they've got this um choir for um lgbtq people yeah for people who have various problems with their body mm. and thing, and for um, refugees. Now, I think, yes, get people who aren't very well and have, you know, be a wonderful occasion for them to sing. But I think the other two are ordinary people. I don't see why they should be taken out and selected. Prioritised, yeah. A, fe a special position. It's a bit woke, isn't it? It is a bit woke. I'm sorry about that. I'm not... No, no, to... listen, this is the place to be if you don't want to uh, be <laughs> criticised for being uh, unwoke, because we're very unwoke here at Talk TV. <laughs> we, we take a great pride in it, actually. But you're right. You know, everything that now happens has to be woke, you know, otherwise it can't possibly be uh, allowed to go ahead because somebody will complain. And quite often those people doing the complaining are actually a very small minority of people who make an awful lot of noise and everybody seems to be frightened of them, you know. How can you possibly have a coronation without a group of refugees over it? Well, why? You know. Well, I think you can have refugees if you've got the right voice and just put them in. I don't think we have to make it a big deal. And the same at LGBTQ... Mm whatever you know let them just join i don't think you want to make a big deal that they're well, like imagine that. if you aren't if you imagine if you put an advert in a paper and said we'd like to start up a choir but everybody who's in the choir must be heterosexual imagine the outcry yes exactly. i mean you know 
But there we are. Uh, something to look forward to, though. Uh, I mean, I don't know when you're going to get a day off at this point, Angela, because, um, you know, we haven't actually mentioned them by name properly, but they've been a bit quiet. You know, the Montecito Massive, haven't they? Yes, they have been quiet. Only Meghan. Harry hasn't been quiet. And there is, of course, this terrible, frightening thought that he might actually be paid well over a million by American TV stations to report on it rather than be there. Oh, God. Because that was what... And, of course, and of course, the, the people who don't think he's doing anything wrong will say, well, it was all right for Princess Diana's brother to be an NBC correspondent, because he was, wasn't he? Um, yeah. But not at every single royal occasion, though. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, God, we got that to look forward to. And that'd be funny, though, because he'd have to stand in the press area, then we could all go and stand around him and talk to him and ask him questions. But the good thing is, you see, I, don't, I, I like to work all the time, so for me to be really busy like that is very exciting <laughs> and positive, and I love it. I don't think you've got any choice in the matter, Angela, but listen, great oh. to talk to you. Thank you. For